sorry for the technical difficulties. For some reason, now, my stream cut out. And it's a smooth arrival and a relaxing night for you. Android Auto and the SmartThings ecosystem. All they've been talking about is how everything's integrated with each other. And more with Nest, experience. Google, Android Auto. You can enjoy Auto. your Galaxy everywhere. In your phone, your home, and your car. We're thrilled to think about where this technology will take us next. We continue to lead the way with services that make your daily activity seamless. With Digital Key, you will be able to open the door of your with your trailblazing, touchless experience. You will be able to unlock your car door with your phone. The door will unlock when you reach it. No sooner, no later. You'll even be able to share your digital key across smartphones, regardless of brand or platform. So if I'm lending my car to a friend while I'm out of town, Digital key sharing will make our handoff seamless. I can send the key to my friend with just a few easy taps, even if we're thousands of miles apart. We'll continue supporting wireless communication tech you know well, including NFC. And we're excited to be at the forefront of ultra-wideband technology. We're working with industry consortia to lead the standardization of UWB and digital key technology, making them more readily available, secure, and shareable. Our UWB enables digital key to send short pulses between your mobile device and your car. Then, it makes super precise distance calculation in real time, unlocking your door when you reach it. And with UWB, you can rely on AR Finder to guide you directly to the car. Digital car keys unlock a world of possibilities. We're partnering with the world's largest car company to take your auto experience to the next level. And we're so excited about the great car experiences we'll be introducing in the near future. But that's not the only partnership we want to tell you about today. To tell you more, back to you, Kian. Thank you, Kevin. For years, our partnership with Google has led to some of the greatest innovation in mobile technology. Together, we have created the fastest growing open ecosystem in the industry to better serve you. It's time to take it to the next level. We are entering into a new and expanded partnership with Google. From communication to connectivity, it will yield new innovations across the board. Whether you are behind the wheel or at your home office, look forward to exciting new mobile experiences. For more about our new partnership, Please welcome my good friend, Hiroshi Lapheimer. Hi, Tian. Thanks for your warm welcome, and I'm really excited to join Unpack today. We're so grateful for the close partnership with Samsung and what we've been able to build together since the first Galaxy S smartphone. Now, it's been over a decade, and I think today's launch highlights a new era for Samsung and Google. The Galaxy S21 is a major step forward as we've pushed the boundaries with Samsung and their world-class technology to create an amazing, cohesive product experience. Not only are we bringing our innovations closer together on the phone, we also recognize it's a multi-device world, so we are building beyond the phone together. As Tian mentioned earlier, staying connected with friends and family is a top priority for many of us. Google Duo and Messages are great examples of how we've worked with Samsung to make these apps more helpful and easy to use. On Messages, we have completed the global rollout of RCS on Android. For those of you not familiar with RCS, it's the next generation of texting that replaces SMS. You can enjoy enhanced features like chatting over Wi-Fi, seeing if someone has received and read your messages, sharing reactions, and doing all this on your other devices like PCs too. We're also passionate about developing experiences that are designed for each and every user. The seamless integration of Discover to to provide personalized, high quality content on the S21 with a single swipe from your home screen. And as part of our commitment to make computing accessible to everyone, we've collaborated with Samsung to develop a new version of TalkBack, a Google screen reader available first on Galaxy. This can really help shape the future of how everyone interacts with their phones. We are in a multi-device world. The smartphone is just one of many screens you interact with throughout the day. As you saw earlier with Android Auto, Google Nest, and SmartThings, we're investing deeply with Samsung to ensure our collaborations extend across devices beyond the phone. 
The latest Android 11 release gives you more control over your data and privacy than ever before. For those of you interested in using your S21 for work, you'll be pleased to learn that it's an Android Enterprise recommended device. The S21 exceeds the program's elevated hardware and software requirements for business use. The Galaxy S21 is an incredible device that brings the best of the Samsung and Google collaboration. I'm inspired by what we'll be able to build together by bringing the magic of the Google ecosystem and Samsung's amazing technology together to innovate and to create helpful experiences for you, our customers. In 2021 and beyond, we are taking our partnership to the next level, and I am incredibly excited for this new era. Kudos to the Samsung team, and thanks again for inviting us. Back to you, Tian. Thank you, Hiroshi. Today, we've shown you what Samsung is all about. True innovation that opens up a world of untapped imagination. A universe of experiences that defy all expectations. So that you have the freedom and the tools to be yourself and to express yourself. Of course, the power to imagine new products goes hand in hand with the power to imagine a better world. We have always been committed to using technology as an instrument for good, to doing the right thing for the betterment of the world. That commitment led us to partner with the UNDP and help promote the global goals on more than 80 million smartphones. Just a few months ago, we announced our expansion of this partnership with the Generation 70. This program highlights the amazing work of our young leaders, like Maximo, who is addressing climate change in Argentina, and Shomi, who is raising health and hygiene awareness around the world. Generation 70 is about elevating the voice of a generation, unlocking their power of purpose and are taking action together. Young people are coming of age during a global pandemic and their optimism, determination, and resilience is more important than it's ever been. We are honored and humbled to help them reach their goal. We all have the power to affect change. It only takes I don't think I have those messaging a sense of purpose. I hope you will join us on this mission. On behalf of everyone at Samsung, thank you again for watching Unpack today. Stay safe out there, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Okay, okay, okay. So what do you guys think? Did y'all enjoy the, the Samsung Unpacked? Again, I think it's that, that hour limit that I have on YouTube. Um, I could be wrong, but it did cut out at an hour, so that's what I'm figuring what it was. But, I mean, let me know in the comment section what you thought. Um, I enjoyed it. I think Samsung has been doing a good job of innovating or at least trying to innovate. I think it's the problem with the smartphone industry right now is innovation is tough. And despite all the competitors, no one's really taking that leap forward. Whether, excuse me, it's a bigger battery or a more efficient battery. You have companies that are trying to push the envelope with cameras, but you got to realize with cameras, the lenses can only allow you to go so far because those lenses are so small. You're talking about those lenses and the sensors. Um, I'm using my DSLR right now, but if I pull out my camera rig, let's see.
So which which smartphone do you know is going to give you the capability to be able to do this? All right. I'm ro I'm recording in 4K, right? 265 24 hertz or 24 um, frames per second, 30, 60, 120. Um, external monitor added to it. ND filters. So what what smartphone is going to give you that capability? And I don't think there's much out there that can. I mean, they can attempt to, they can try, and I give them credit for trying, but it's a, it's a tough it's tough to reach this point. So um, as of right now, they're doing a good job of trying to reach that point or make things better, especially for casual users. But for professionals, this is still the way to go. Like, how are you going to beat my rack focusing with this? You're not. Uh, stabilization, yeah, you can match it because you can put it on a gimbal. And you have all these other capabilities. And there's other companies that are coming out with lenses and stuff that you can utilize. But, again, this right here, yeah, weight-wise, you are helping me a whole lot. If I could record a whole music video with my smartphone at a high quality, you know, at 10 bit or 12 bit, sure. But can you do that? And you already know, well, some of you don't know, but for the, the camera industry, we know how 8K works. Um, 8K is large, humongous files. You know, they're gonna eat it up real quick. Like this right here, I got a gigabyte, a t well, I got a terabyte card that I use and on a med and on a video shoot, music video shoot, I think I was out there for like three, four hours. That thing was gone. I think I used almost the whole terabyte. So what phone is gonna give you a terabyte worth of storage? Um, and that's recording 4K, F-Log. That's not even raw. So 8K files are gonna go, you're gonna go through them just like that. Your, your memory just like that. So, again it's just not to that point so everybody wants to say oh i got ak but canon came out with an ak camera and it kept overheating like it's the processors it's hard to handle that so give me real good 4k give me qhd well that's quad quad hd give me 2k real good 2k real good 4k skip i don't need 8k don't give me that Give me the capability of having 4K at 120 hertz, or 120 FPS, I mean. And I'll be good. Um, and I can utilize that. But the lenses are still gonna be a hindrance because that depth of field, that shallow depth of field you wanna get with the blurriness, yeah, you get it through the AI, but it's not the same. Like, you don't get that separation that you can get with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera because of the use of lenses and the focal length and stuff like that and your f-stops but I mean I give it to Samsung I mean they first they talked about the Galaxy Buds Pro everybody wants to have a, bro, a, a pro brand I still think Sony probably has the best headphones or earphones that there are right now with the noise canceling and everything and then they came out with the the smart tags yo they beat apple to it apple had rumors for it and didn't come out with it they was should have came out with it in september october or november and they didn't and samsung beat them to it so samsung is the first one to re release smart tags put your smart tag on your dog put your smart tag on your luggage which would be perfect for luggage especially when luggage be getting lost and the airlines don't know where stuff is going on, I can be like, yo, my luggage is showing up that it's still here. Or mine is still showing that it never left Atlanta or New Jersey or wherever you're at. So that's gonna be real good. As far as the phones themselves, I mean, it's the, the next step up. A better chip, better so-called better cameras. Um, I honestly think it's a camera conspiracy or conspiracy to just lower the resolution of your old cameras through software 
when you come out with a new camera to make it look like it's that much better because your sensor your sensors don't improve that much at every phone iteration like Sony builds cameras how often the Sony's cameras see a new sensor they don't see it that often. Fuji builds cameras how often does Fuji change out its sensor Fuji has the same sensor in their X-T4, X-Pro3, their X-T3, X-T30, um, X-100V, like, and the X-T3, X-T4 came out, X-Pro3, and they have the same sensor. Like, you, they don't come out with new sensors every year. So for smartphones to say, oh, we got a new sensor and our camera's so much better, it isn't. It's slight changes in an AI, and that's it. So that whole camera debate, um, you, you can have that. I don't like that bump. I give them credit for making it a little smoother and making it metal so it doesn't break when you drop it. Or at least it shouldn't. But I'm not a fan of that. Uh, the Ultra seemed pretty cool, but it says pro level capabilities. My Note 21 Ultra or Note 11 Ultra 5G is supposed to be pro level. I go in my settings and I can pick out. I can go straight to pro mode on my phone. I don't know if you can see this. If you look at the top, the top right has pro mode right there. So I can do pro video, I can do pro camera mode. And when I go into my settings, look, I have all the capabilities of doing what I need to do in there. I can adjust my ISO, I can adjust my autofocus, all that. So how much pro are you really getting with the Ultra? Uh, and this is not not the knock Samsung. This is a whole smartphone industry thing. I've been sitting back and watching and seeing all the reviews and checking all the phones. And this is just a everybody wants to be have the next great thing without actually having the next great thing. I, I talked about it in the last stream in the live stream that autofocus or not the autofocus the five G. Five G is trash. I'm in Atlanta. And I don't see no speeds any different than I had 4G when I was in DC and when I was on my iPhone 10. So for some reason, my five when I'm on 5G, it's still like I could be streaming YouTube TV and it'll drop my YouTube TV or be buffering. And then when I go to 4G, I can't watch YouTube TV at all. But when I was in DC, I could use my 4G and have no issues watching YouTube TV. So I don't know. And it's still the same service I was on AT&T the whole time. So I don't know. I think it's you lower the capability of the of the old technology while adding a little bit to the new technology and making it seem like it's a drastic change when it really isn't. Uh, as far as, so you came out with the smart tags. You came out with those phones. And then they just talked about integration. So that was the, the, miss, the part that you missed. Um, if you were on my live stream when it cut out was the integration with your Nest, with your Google products, Windows, the Windows integration, Microsoft integration, um, Nest products, Google Nest products, like your um, thermostat, your locks for your doors, all that stuff, the integration of all that. And then when I got back on, which you'll see in this video, they talk about the integration with um, vehicles, Android Auto, um, smart key to get into your vehicle like Tesla does which you can use your phone to get into your Tesla uh, so they're gonna look at the, using that more for more vehicles which would be a good thing as well so good job Samsung way to go uh, I would say to have the the one disappointing thing because this other stuff that I talked about wasn't really disappointing it was just a, the smartphone industry and what they do is the adaptive 120 um, hertz refresh rate on the phone. I don't like that. They're, the ROG phone, uh, OnePlus's phone, other gaming phones allow you to have 120 hertz at all times. You're not at 4K, so you can give me 120 or 144, um, 100, 1440p, my bad. 14, you can give me 1440p at 120 hertz at all times, especially in the Ultra with that 5,000 milliamp battery. I don't know why you feel like you can't. You have to give me adaptive. You go anywhere from 10 hertz to 120 hertz. Who wants 10 hertz? When would I ever want 10 hertz? 
I don't even want a monitor with 30 hertz. I don't even want a gaming system with less than 60 hertz. So when would I ever want 10 hertz? So that adaptive crap, nah, you can keep that. So that would be the only thing I'm really disappointed with that Samsung did. And especially did not have full 120 hertz on that Ultra. I think that was disappointing, especially for that price. Um, anything over $1,000 should have 120 hertz at all times. And I shouldn't have to trade off my screen quality for that, especially when I'm at 1440p. Now, if I was at 4K, I could understand at 8K, I could get that, but not at 1440p. We've been at 1440p for a while now. Uh, we've been way past the 1080p for a minute. So for me to have to bump back down to 1080p in order to use my 120 hertz, no, nah, I'm good. I don't even have to go down to 1080p to use my PS5 or my Xbox to use 120 hertz. So why would I have to do it on my smartphone? Especially my smartphone is two times the price of both of those. So Samsung did a good job. Areas to improve in. I really need a smartphone company to just go out and be like, you know what, I'm gonna destroy everybody. Give me the security, give me the integration, give me the great camera, give me the great screen, deep blacks, the connectivity, give me the 120 hertz, give me the big battery, give me back a headphone jack, USB type C wireless charging, and I'm good with a nice form factor. Cause this really right here, my note, I thought I was gonna like my night note 20. Or my note, I'm sorry, I keep saying note 20 because it's the S20, but my Note 11, I don't like this, this phone is too slick. It's too slick and slippery. I thought I was gonna like it. And then a lot of people complain about the curved screens. And I see why now, because this is a very curved screen. And unless I have the case on it, I'm constantly doing something that I don't need to be doing. So I can see why it is the way it is. But that's my take on the Samsung Unpacked event 2021 here in January. And um, I liked it. I hope you liked it. Please go down in the comments. Let me know what you think. I'll be sure to respond. And enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.